Once upon a time, there was a boy named Aladdin who lived far, far away with his poor widowed mother. One night, a stranger knocked on the front door and said, Good evening, my name is Mustafa and I am looking for my brother's son, Aladdin. I would like to take Aladdin to work with me to make good money. Aladdin wasn't too keen on the idea because there was something about Mustafa that he did not like. But his mother thought it was a great idea and she agreed to let Aladdin go with his uncle. Aladdin and his uncle walked for a full day into the desert until they reached a cave with a small entrance. Mustafa was too big to fit through the entrance, so he asked Aladdin to go inside. Aladdin did not trust him and was afraid he might block him in. But his uncle told him there were gems and gold inside the cave. Mustafa told Aladdin he could take as much as he wanted. Mustafa only wanted an old lamp from inside the cave. So Aladdin went inside. <laughs> Aladdin could not believe his eyes when he entered the cave. It was full of treasures. He started filling his pockets with diamonds and rubies and emeralds. He also found a gold ring that fit his finger perfectly. Finally, he found the lamp Mustafa had asked for. He yelled for Mustafa to help him out. But Mustafa said he wanted to see the lamp first. Aladdin did not trust him, so he refused to let him see the lamp. Mustafa was angry and said, I am not your real uncle and I don't care about you, Aladdin. Since you won't give me the lamp, I will block the cave entrance with this huge rock. Mustafa left Aladdin inside. Aladdin sat crying with the lamp inside the cave. Stupid old lamp, he said. It is not even real gold. He rubbed the lamp a little to wipe off the dust. And all of a sudden, poof, a genie came out of the lamp. Master, I will grant you three wishes, said the genie. Right away, Aladdin said, take me home. And poof, Aladdin was at home. His mother almost fainted at the sight of Aladdin. He told her about Mustafa and the cave full of treasures. Aladdin rubbed the ring he had put on his finger, and a second genie appeared. Master, I can grant you two wishes, said the genie. Aladdin wished for a grand palace, and enough wealth for him and his family to be rich forever. All of a sudden, Aladdin and his mother had a beautiful palace, filled with riches. One day, Aladdin was walking through the city when he saw the most beautiful girl. He fell in love with her at first sight. She was the Sultan's daughter, Yasmin. Yasmin loved Aladdin too. Aladdin went to ask the Sultan if he could marry Yasmin, and the Sultan said yes. After many years, the Sultan died and Aladdin ruled the country. This news reached Mustafa. Mustafa knew how Aladdin became so rich and powerful, and he made a plan to get the lamp back. <laughs> Mustafa tricked Yasmin, who had no idea who he was, into trading him with the old ugly lamp for a shiny new one. Yasmin accepted the trade and went to show Aladdin. Aladdin was mad at Mustafa for tricking his wife into this trade. He searched for Mustafa and found him sleeping with the magic lamp. Aladdin slipped the lamp from Mustafa and raced back to the palace. 
Aladdin had one more wish, and he asked the genie to turn Mustafa into a frog so that he could never bother them again. <laughs> the genie granted Aladdin's wish, and Yasmin and Aladdin lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, a girl named Cinderella lived with her stepmother and two mean stepsisters. They made Cinderella clean and cook all day for them, leaving no time for Cinderella for herself. <laughs> One day, the king and queen of their village announced a grand ball for all the young ladies to attend. It was time for their son, the prince, to find a bride. Cinderella had to help make dresses for her mean stepsisters. She had no time to make a dress for herself. She worked hard on the dresses for her stepsisters, and they just made fun of her. Hurry up, said the stepmother. I am trying very hard, said Cinderella, as I want to get my dress started too. <laughs> the stepsisters laughed and said, Imagine Cinderella at the ball in her torn, raggedy dress. <laughs> Cinderella just kept working to finish the stepsisters' dresses. <laughs> On the night of the grand ball, a fine carriage picked up the stepsisters and stepmother but left Cinderella behind to do her chores. Cinderella had no dress anyway. She had no time left after making the stepsisters' dresses to make her own. She waved goodbye and said aloud, I wish I could go to the ball. Then, poof! All of a sudden, a fairy godmother appeared. Cinderella could not believe her eyes. Who are you? said Cinderella. Well, I am your fairy godmother, and I will grant your wish to go to the ball. But what will I wear? said Cinderella, and how could I ever get there? Then, poof, with a touch of her magic wow. wand on Cinderella's head, Cinderella was dressed in the finest ball gown and special glass slippers that fit only her. Cinderella looked at herself and could not believe it. But how will I ever get there? said Cinderella. And then, poof! With the touch of her magic wand, the most beautiful carriage was waiting to take Cinderella to the ball. Have a wonderful time, said the fairy godmother. But remember, Cinderella, at midnight, everything goes back to the way it was before. Cinderella promised her fairy godmother she would leave the ball by midnight. Cinderella went off to the ball. She met the prince and they danced all night. They danced and danced, and they were having such a great time that Cinderella did not notice the time was slipping away. Dong! The clock rang. It was going to be midnight. Dong! Cinderella had to leave. The prince begged her to stay. She ran up the ballroom stairs, and one of her glass slippers fell off her foot. Please stay, said the prince. We have just met. Goodbye, she said, as she waved to the prince. And she slipped into her carriage and was whisked away. The prince was left standing on the ballroom stairs, holding Cinderella's glass slipper that had fallen off her foot. The prince knew he must find her by matching the glass slipper to the fair maiden Cinderella who fit that special shoe. The next day, he visited all the fair maidens and finally found Cinderella, who fit the glass slipper perfectly. Her stepmother could not believe it. How can this be? said the stepmother. 
I can't believe this, said one stepsister. Cinderella fits the slipper, said the other stepsister. The prince knew he had found his bride. Cinderella pulled the other glass slipper from her pocket. He said, Come with me to live in my castle, my future bride. <laughs> the prince and Cinderella had the most beautiful wedding in the whole land, and they lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess named Snow White. She lived in a castle with her stepmother, a beautiful but wicked queen. The queen was very jealous of Snow White and forced her to work as a servant. Every day, the wicked queen looked into her magic mirror and asked, Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? The mirror usually answered that the queen was the fairest, which pleased her. Meanwhile, Snow White did her chores and made friends with the courtyard doves. One day, a prince heard Snow White singing. He was enchanted by her. The queen saw this and became angry. Then the magic mirror told her that Snow White was the fairest one in the land. The queen was furious. She ordered her huntsmen to take Snow White to the forest and do away with her. Snow White was so kind and gentle, the huntsmen could not harm her. Instead, he warned Snow White of the Wicked Queen's plan. He told her to run away. Snow White ran deep into the dark forest, alone and scared. She fell down and began to cry. The woodland animals heard her and came out to comfort her. They told her everything will be all right, and they showed her to a tiny cottage. There were seven beds in the cottage, with seven names on them. Doc, Happy, Sneezy, Dopey, Grumpy, Bashful, and Sleepy. Snow White thought to herself, what funny names for children, and laid down on a bed and fell asleep. In the meantime, seven dwarves were on their way home from a long day at work. When they got home to their cottage, they found Snow White asleep in one of their beds. Why, it's a girl, they all said. Snow White woke up and said, how do you do? She told them her story of the Wicked Queen. The dwarf said she could stay with them. <laughs> Back at the castle, the Queen did not know Snow White was still alive when she asked the magic mirror, Who is the fairest of them all? The mirror answered, Snow White is the fairest of them all. The wicked queen was angry. I will find her and poison her. The wicked queen disguised herself as an old woman and headed to the seven dwarfs' cottage. It was morning and the dwarfs left to go to work while Snow White was working in the garden. Working away, she saw the old woman who was really the wicked queen. Snow White said, hello, and the old woman offered her an apple from her basket, the poison apple that would put Snow White to sleep forever unless she was kissed by a prince. That was the only way to break the poisonous spell. Snow White accepted the apple and took a bite. She fell to the ground and the old woman ran away. 
The woodland creatures went to get the dwarfs. The dwarfs could not awaken Snow White. So they built her a glass coffin so they could keep watch over her forever. One day, the prince was riding on his horse through the forest and came upon Snow White in her glass coffin. It was her who he saw singing at the wicked queen's castle. He knelt down and kissed Snow White. She awoke and the spell was broken. The dwarfs were so happy. Snow White was awake. Snow White thanked the dwarfs for all their help and said they would be best friends forever. The prince asked Snow White to come and live in his castle. Snow White rode off with her prince and they lived happily ever after. This is the story of Princess Elsa and Princess Anna. When they were little girls, they were best friends. Ooh. Princess Anna was one of the only people in the world that knew Princess Elsa's secret. Elsa had the special power to make snow and ice. One night, Elsa used her secret power and filled the grand ballroom with snow so the sisters could play. As they were playing, Elsa lost control and she accidentally hit Anna with a blast of icy magic. Anna was badly hurt. Her parents went off to the ancient mountain troll to ask them for help. The wisest old troll told them that Anna could be saved and that she was lucky to have been hit in the head and not in her heart. As the years passed, Anna forgot about that night. To keep Elsa's special gift a secret from everyone else, their parents surrounded the castle with walls and never let anyone inside. It seemed whenever Elsa had strong feelings, her magic powers would spill out. Elsa never wanted to hurt her sister again, so she stopped playing with Anna. Anna became very lonely. Even after their parents were lost, the two sisters didn't spend any time playing together. Years later, it was time for Elsa to become queen. For just that one special day, the castle gates were opened. Hundreds of guests attended Elsa's coronation ceremony. Elsa worked very hard the whole day to hide her feelings and special powers. At the party, Anna danced with a handsome prince. He made her heart flutter. They fell in love and decided to marry. Elsa thought this engagement was a bad idea. Anna could not believe her sister and they started arguing. As Elsa lost control and started to shout, her secret power was exposed. As ice shot from her hands, everyone stared in shock. Now they all knew her secret. Elsa ran out of the castle and fled to the mountains. It was summer, but Elsa's power had created a terrible winter storm. Anna felt terrible and ran off to find her sister, despite the bad winter storm. She met a magic snowman along the way named Olav. Olav knew where they would find Elsa and agreed to help. Olav led Anna to a beautiful ice palace that Elsa had created with her powers. Inside, Anna found Elsa and told her about the terrible storm. Anna told Elsa she must come back and help, but Elsa did not want to hurt anyone and they started fighting about her return. As they fought, a wave of magic burst from Elsa and struck Anna in the heart. Elsa knew what she had to do. She had to find the trolls and ask how to reverse the magic which was now freezing her sister. Olav agreed to help. 
Elsa and Olaf found the ancient mountain troll, and he said, Only an act of true love can thaw Anna's frozen heart. Elsa brought Anna back to their parents' castle to find the prince Anna was to marry, as he could save Anna with his true love. He laughed when he saw her and threw the sisters in the dungeon. I only pretended to love her to get the castle and kingdom, said the prince. Afraid and locked in the dungeon, Elsa looked at her frozen sister. All of a sudden, the prince came in with a sword. He swung it at Anna, and the sword shattered on her frozen body. Elsa grabbed her and held her frozen sister tight. And suddenly, Anna began to thaw. As Olaf watched them, he remembered the wise old troll and what he said. An act of true love will thaw her frozen heart. The two sisters' love had saved them and their kingdom. They were best friends again. Even in the summer, Elsa always made Olaf snow so he could never melt. And now the castle gates were wide open. The evil prince was long gone, and they all lived happily ever after.